Hey everybody, this is Craig Cottle from Nature Reliance School, guest instructor with DansDepot.com. Came out here to do some videos today, and it's about 7 degrees, had 2 or 3 inches of snow last night here in Kentucky. And I thought one of the best things I could do was talk about how to get out in this type of weather and stay safe. Glad you're with us. One of the cool things about my upbringing, I guess, is I spent a lot of time out in the woods doing survival and hunting and all that kind of good stuff, but I also spent a lot of time feeding cattle. And on days like today when it's 7 degrees and you've got to feed the cattle no matter what the weather is, you learn quickly how to dress properly. So I'm going to give you a few ideas from a survival mindset as well as just a working mindset because it's 7 degrees out here today and uh, it snowed and I'm going to cut firewood and because uh, it needs to be cut. So we're going to give you some hints and ideas on how to go about doing that and so you don't get yourself hurt and you don't get in trouble. So you may notice it's like 7 degrees and I've got a basically a ball cap on and uh, if I was going to be out in the woods and hiking and stuff of that nature, I'd have something more like a toboggan. I'd probably have a good scarf or at least a neck gaiter or something of that nature. 60 to 70 percent of your body heat is going to escape through the back of your neck and the top of your head. So in those situations, you want to make sure that you've got something that covers your head and covers your neck. Uh, in a situation today where I'm going to cut firewood, if I had all that on, I'm going to start sweating and that's going to make me incredibly, incredibly dangerous in a dangerous situation. Uh, same is true if you're in a hiking situation. If you're hiking and you're carrying a heavy load, cold weather like this, you do not want to have that many clothes on. So uh, we're going to give you some hints about that and, uh, and then we'll move on to sort of survival methodology as well. So on a day like today where I'm going to be working out in this 7 degree weather, basically all I've got on is I've got an underlayment of um, polyester. It's basically a wicking garment uh, that I used when I deer hunt. And uh, I've got another uh, like button down shirt that's polyester as well and then I've got this jacket now on a day like day where I'm going to be in the snow I don't want something where snow is going to stick to me uh, that's one of the things I learned on farm is that you know you always wear Carhartt stuff like that on the farm because it's real tough and that's good but you got to find something when snow is going to hit it it falls off because you don't want that snow sitting on you so if you're wearing garments like fleece and stuff of that nature Carhartt out in weather like this and snow's falling on you like it's going to be snow falling on me today then uh, your body heat's going to melt that snow and then you're basically sitting there in wet garments whereas if you wear something like this it's got a sheen to it then you can work stay warm snow hits you snow falls off it doesn't melt on you and get you cold so some other considerations that'll help you um, basically something like a scarf or a kefia shimong Something like this that you can wrap around. You know, these things are indispensable in, in desert warfare, but at the same time, they're indispensable uh, things to have, as long as it's not necessarily 100% cotton. Um, in cold weather, you can use these in the wintertime to wrap around your neck, wrap around your face, wrap around your ears, any number of things to help keep you warm. Uh, but again, as we've said so many times, cotton is bad in cold weather because if it gets wet, then it doesn't insulate very well. So a couple things that I like to keep around is... You know, a real simple little beanie hat made out of fleece. Uh, something like this that covers my ears if I want it to, covers the back of my neck, and then I can flip it up. So basically the way this works is just like this. It's real lightweight and it breathes pretty easily. And then if I want to put my hood up, I can put on my hood up. It's not cumbersome. I can put that hat back on me to shade the sun out of my eyes. And then again, I can flip it up when I start feeling a little warm, get some of that heat that's off of me. And when I start chilling down again, Let's put it right back down. So on a day like today where it's really cold and I've got to work out here, uh, it's not going to be easy to be able to keep my hands warm. So something like a good pick, thick pair of gloves got fleece on the inside of them uh, is a good idea. Uh, where I'm working in snow, I've got these longer gloves so the snow doesn't get down into my gloves so easily. And if I wasn't doing that, what my preferred methodology to do when I'm not working, don't have to use my hands that much, is to have a pair of mittens that fold, the fingers fold down on. Because what happens is that when you separate your fingers in a pair of gloves like this, you know, it's real easy for air to circulate around your fingers and your fingers to get cold. We all know this, but if you put them in a pair of mittens, all your hands, your fingers can stay in there warm together. 
And in addition to that, you can get some of those nice little hand warmers and stick them down in the mittens. And when your hands get too hot, you just unfold them. So uh, the reason I'm saying that is, you know, that might be a good method to work too. But at the same time, um, my hands are really cold right now. And I've only been out here for about 20 minutes. So I'm going to have to do something to make sure my hands stay warm. Man, we've talked about it a lot, but we cannot say enough the obvious that a lot of people know. But then again, there's a lot of beginners that are new to this subject matter, and that is you got to dress in layers. One of the things that I do is uh, I have one of two vests on me almost all the time in cold weather. Either I have a thinner fleece vest that's on underneath of me uh, when I'm going to be doing light work, and when I'm basically going to be out here sitting around a fire or even just doing nature study or wildlife observation or hunting, I might have something like a really, pardon me, it's cold out here. I'm going to have a lot of something such as a down vest with me too. Uh, I love these things. These don't insulate so well when they're wet. That's why I like fleece. But in a situation where I know I want to be sitting on a deer stand or just sitting doing wildlife observation or taking notes or just studying tracks, I'll have something like this with me too. Last but not least, some other considerations from a survival perspective is um, you got to maintain your core body temp. That's why I'm recommending having a vest with you at all times. Uh, as far as out here on a day like today, it's amazing. It's amazing if you've never done it how much warmer you can get just by standing in the sun. So if you set up a survival shelter or something like that, if you can get the sun on you at the same time in a survival situation, you'll be so much better off. That's why we always recommend setting up shelters for something that you you basically have to spend the night out in a shelter. You set it up so that it's facing the east so that when the sun comes up first in the morning, you're getting that first sunlight. That way you're getting sun on you as soon as you can because it makes a huge difference on getting your body warm. Other than that, as far as your extremities, you can always stick them in your pockets, obviously. Stick them near your groin between your legs to heat up and stick them under your arms. That's another way to get a lot of body heat because basically those parts of your body stay closed together and it'll help warm your extremities. And then at the same time, remember, remember from the law of threes that you've got to maintain your body heat before you get calories. So with, if you don't, if you're in a really bad situation, I want to emphasize a bad situation, and you think you have the ability to be rescued in two or three hours, then exercise is a good option. And something as simple as jumping jacks to get your body warm back up will help you because you're going to run out of calories and run out of energy uh, and the need for calories and energy after you've died of exposure. So it would be better to at least exercise, jumping jacks, walk around, keep in a little movement. Don't go far and get lost and make it worse. Worse, but at the same time, do something to get your body warm. So yeah, I'm pretty sure that most of that is common sense for a lot of us, but maybe there's something in there that you can grab onto that and utilize it and think about it and give you pause for consideration. I spent a lot of time outdoors, you all. I mean, I spent either in the woods or on the farm, and it didn't matter what the weather was. Most of the time I went anyway, sometimes because I had to, and sometimes because I chose to. So I've learned a lot. I've made a bunch of mistakes, you know, and uh, I want you all to learn from my mistakes so that you don't have to make the same ones. So that's some ideas that I've had. I'm sure there's some others. Uh, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Put some comments down here as to what you think could help. And uh, we can all help each other out and get stronger and better and spend more time in the woods. Until next time, I hope to see you on or off the trail. <laughs>